Force. Understanding the communication process will simply help you do your job better. Hi, I'm Dave Smith and welcome to ProForce. Well, today we're going to examine the communication process. We're going to explore methods and types of communication as well as review obstacles to effective communication. We'll also identify basic principles of effective communication and talk about and review communication equipment and define telephone etiquette. We'll even deal with some issues on how to handle troublesome callers. Well, to begin with, let's define communication. Communication is the process by which people convey information. This may be facts, ideas, or feelings, and they convey these to each other so that there is a mutual understanding. Now there are four objectives of communication. Number one is to be understood exactly as we intended. Number two is to have the receiver of our message agree to accept the message. Number three, to obtain a favorable action or response to our message, and number four, to develop or maintain favorable relations with those of whom we communicate. Now, why do we communicate? Well, there are four purposes of communication. The first is to send messages. The second, to receive messages. The third, to understand messages. And finally, number four, to achieve favorable responses. Now, the communication process is very important and even, even build, can even build trust between two people. And when there is trust, there is more effective communication. In other words, I tell you something because I want you to do or know something, and I trust you to hear me and to follow through. Now, an example of this, when you write a report, you want someone to know what happened, or when you instruct a visitor, you want them to complete the visitor's log correctly. Or when you ask someone what they're doing, you expect an answer to your question. Now, when there's trust between two people, effective communication can take place. Trust also can mean discretion and commitment to confidentiality. So remember, do not engage in gossip. It's not professional, and you should only share confidential information with a supervisor. Well, next, let's discuss the components, or what makes up the communication process. Now, there are three basic components. The first is the sender. This is the person who transmits or sends the message to another person. The second is the message itself. Now this is the information that is being sent. The third is the receiver. Now this is the person who receives the message or the information. There are three methods of communication, three very different ways to communicate a message. The first is verbal communication. Now this involves a speaker and a listener. The message is transmitted by the spoken word and involves word choice and tone of voice. Now, for example, even a young child who is just beginning to learn to speak quickly recognizes that there is a difference between the words spoken softly and those shouted in angry terms. Therefore, the tone of voice can convey a message equally as important as the words themselves. Now, your choice of words is also very important. You must be very, very sensitive to the meaning of words spoken, for they sometimes can reflect prejudice or bias on the part of a listener. Now, poor choice of words may force listeners to think they have received a message different from the one the speaker tried to convey. Now, an example of this is, if you use derogatory terms or slang expressions for different ethnic groups, their use suggests prejudice, and the listener is not likely to respond positively to you as a result of this. So choose your words carefully. Now the second method of communication is nonverbal communication. Now this is the transmission of messages through body behavior or body language rather than through words and can be as powerful as a spoken word. You must be careful, however, in interpreting body language for all gestures and behaviors are not universal. Now that is, different cultures use different kinds of body language to convey messages. An example of this is that we all know that a raised eyebrow can suggest concern or a lack of understanding. A clenched fist reveals that a person is probably angry. But in Europe, a general, for instance, kisses a soldier on both cheeks when awarding him a medal. But in the United States, this kind of praise is reflected in a salute. Now you must learn how to read and interpret body language. Be careful when doing this with people you don't know very well. 
Also, certain kinds of body language may be revealing, ex especially for security officers. Remember that if a person fails to maintain eye contact with you, that may mean something. Also, if you observe someone sneaking around a loading dock, what message could this be? Imagine if you saw a company employee carrying a box out of a building. Could there be a message in that behavior? Well, one thing you must remember, though, is be careful about becoming too close to another person because many people dislike intimacy or being touched and they don't want their private space invaded. Now you must respect everyone's right to privacy. Don't touch other people or stick your face in theirs or even box them into, cor into corners. Now these actions can result in a very negative or even hostile response. Just remember to maintain a respectable distance in routine communications. Now the third method is written communication. This is a very important means of communication for the security officer. Now since everything written becomes a permanent record, always be accurate and complete. Next, there are two levels of communication. The first is objective. Now this can be the facts, the message itself, what actually occurred, or instructions. In other words, objective communication could be you asking a visitor to complete the visitor's log correctly, or describing an event, for instance, in a report. You would describe exactly what you observed, very objectively. The second is subjective. Now this is the level of emotions or feeling one has. Now this is, can be transmitted verbally or non-verbally. For example, a refusal to talk may suggest hostility, shame, or even fear. It could even perhaps mean that someone is just moody. It may mean also that they are in a depressed state. So when dealing with levels of communication, you must observe verbal and non-verbal behavior to obtain a complete message and then weigh the objective and subjective pieces of information equally. Remember, all of these are important in communication. Well now, obviously, from time to time, you may encounter some obstacles in communicating. Now this could be any barrier that inhibits one person from transmitting a message to another. But they're not always so obvious. Now there are two basic types of obstacles. The first is internal obstacles. Now these are obstacles that are within ourselves. They are our attitudes, our moods, or our ability to concentrate. They may even be that if we're distracted, we can't communicate effectively. If a security officer comes to work with all kinds of personal problems, for example, they may actually be disinterested in working that day. Now as a result, the officer does not listen well and does not deal with anyone around them effectively. If an officer insists on using language that is offensive, or does not complete reports accurately or continually talks about personal problems, they are setting up obstacles to effective communication. Now this, of course, will result in poor performance. The next type of obstacle is external obstacles. Now these are obstacles that are placed by others or situations. They could be a result of the environment. Uh, for example, you may have a bad telephone connection, or you might be in a construction zone, zone and it's impossible to talk to another person. Now if there's an environmental barrier, move to a different location if possible. Now remember, with interpersonal obstacles, you must remain calm and courteous and, and attempt to obtain the information without becoming angry or hostile. Just remember, always attempt to control the situation. If for some reason you can't, call your supervisor for assistance. Now obstacles can also occur when assumptions are made. An example of this, assuming that words only have one meaning when they really don't. Let's take the word run, for example. A baseball player scored a run. Don't give me the run around. She has a run in her stocking. One word can have several or many, many different meanings, so make sure you understand the correct meaning meant and intended for it at that time. Another obstacle can occur when you're not able to separate what you know from what you think you know. Now, an example of this is if you see someone in a parking lot taking a briefcase from one car and placing it in another car. Now what do you really know about this? Well, reporting this exactly as you have observed it would reveal the facts only, the things that you know to be true. But if you reported this incident indicating that a theft has occurred, wouldn't you really be guessing? Do you, do you know in fact that a theft has occurred? Of course not. Now it's important that you do follow up and complete all the information when you write your report. Now there are four principles to effective communication techniques. Now we refer to these as the four C's of communication. They are, number one, confidence. When the sender conveys a sense of self-confidence, that is that they are sure of the message and, and in their ability to transmit it, they are displaying a high level of confidence. And when they show that confidence and that ability and skill, it improves the communication process. The second is creativity. Now a sender can be effective by being a creative and by listening, 
observing and by using understandable language and by overcoming any barriers that exist. The third is caring. When a sender demonstrates through words and behavior that they care about the receiver, the receiver may then want to hear and respond to the message more favorably. The fourth is consideration. Now sometimes people are in a hurry or simply do not want to take the time to receive a message. Now when this occurs, the sender either has to delay sending the message or convince the receiver that they need to receive it right now. Well now let's take a look at some of the ways that you can help make the communication process more effective. The first off is to be an active listener. Show that you are interested. In other words, say things like, please help me understand what you mean. The second is recognize rather than deny other pe people's feelings. Now you might say to someone, you sound very angry, or is something wrong? It's very important that you bring that out from them at that time. The third is that recognize rather than condemn those feelings. For example, you might say to someone, well, I think you're overreacting because it's really not that bad a situation. Fourth is to recognize rather than interpret other people's feelings. Now, example of this is don't assume that you know why someone feels the way they do. Now, very often, if you do that assumption, it will, in fact, alienate you from the other person. Number five is use inviting language rather than leading questions. Ask something like, well, how do you feel, instead of, you feel angry, don't you? Number six is be descriptive and not judgmental. In other words, you might say to someone, you are interrupting me, instead of saying, man, you're rude. Number seven, be direct rather than indirect. Say things like, you know, your uniform needs cleaning, rather than saying, man, you're a mess. Number eight, make sure your tone of voice and body language match the words you use, otherwise you'll confuse others. Number nine, help people understand that you are following rules and procedures and that you do not make them up. Now this will help them calm down and not blame you directly. And number ten, and finally, always try to be clear and concise in any directions that you give. Now even though these, many of these techniques relate to verbal communication, many of them also apply to how you write your reports. Remember, your written communications are very, very important. Well, now being a good listener is essential. Listening means hearing, observing, and perceiving both verbal and nonverbal language. Listening may be even more important than talking, especially for you security officers. There are ten ways to improve your listening skills. The first is be interested in what you hear. Now remember that you, if you suggest to others that, that, that they're not interested, that you're not interested, I mean in listening to them, you're not likely to receive an accurate or complete message from them. Secondly, overlook distracting things about the way the message is being delivered. Now if someone has a lisp or they stutter, don't let it irritate, irritate you at all. Such speech impediments are things that you must overlook. Otherwise you might turn off the, turn off the sender from trying to communicate with you. Number three is stay relaxed. Now, even though you may be provoked, you must stay calm and keep your cool. Otherwise, this will interfere with your understanding and your listening. Don't let someone else's prejudice, uh, for example, get in the way of your hearing the complete message. Number four, try to get the message, not just the facts. Now, find out what the person is really trying to say to you. The facts can come later. For instance, is there a crisis or an incident going on? Or is what's going on at the moment more important than the details? What are they really trying to tell you? An example is, someone comes up to you and says, uh, there's some boxes that fell over in the hall. What, is it, what kind of boxes? Is this a crisis? Is this an emergency? Or did just boxes fall over? What are they filled with? Find out the gist of the meaning. Is someone hurt? That type of thing. Remember, under stress, people sometimes will not convey the true message unless you pull it out of them. Number five, understand how other people communicate. Now many people cannot speak clearly or understandably. They get things all mixed up. Your job then is to help them send a message that you can understand. Now this is especially important with people who are not comfortable with the English language. Number six is pay attention. Now if you're listening, listen. Don't wander off on your own conversation or change the subject when someone is trying to tell you something. Number seven is don't permit distractions. Now when you're talking with someone, do not allow others to come up and interrupt. There, if there's too much noise, for instance, try to move to other locations where you can hear better. Number eight is clarify. As someone else is speaking, clarify that person's message in your own mind. 
Now, if you're not sure what you've just heard, ask that person to repeat the message. People generally are willing to clarify and explain to clear up any misunderstandings. Number nine is overcome feelings of being insulted. Now, many, many people use language that you might not care for, including slurs against other people. Now, don't take things personally or feel as though you're being insulted. Listen to their message. And finally, number 10, use thought power. You know, it's estimated that the average person talks at about 125 words per minute and is able to think at a speed of around 400 words per minute. Now, since we can think uh, almost four times faster than we can talk, then this gives us a tremendous amount of thought power to deal with issues. Now, as you listen, use your thought power to figure out what's really going on and what the message really is. Now, in summary, let's decide that being, being an effective listener will help you in all of your communication. So you want to be sure that you, number one, can hear what is being said, number two, that you interpret the message, and number three, that you understand it completely. Well, now let's talk a little bit about some of the equipment that you'll come in contact with. Now, this equipment will aid in the communication process and will help you do your job. This equipment we're talking about are things such as radio, telephones, closed circuit televisions, intercoms, beepers, computers, all this equipment that allows you for constant communication with your supervisors and other security personnel as well as other people that you may work with as well as outsiders. It provides you the opportunity to give information, receive information, provide reports, seek help, obtain instructions, and report emergencies quickly and effectively. Now always make sure your equipment is in good working order. If you find that it isn't, inform your supervisor immediately and always remember to take good care of your equipment. Now probably one of the most important pieces of equipment you'll use is the telephone. And telephone etiquette, or that is being courteous, is essential. Now your telephone manners reflect on you as an officer and on the entire organization. So it's important to follow your organization's telephone procedures. Such things may include, number one, answer the telephone promptly. Don't make the caller wait to get an answer. Number two, always identify yourself. For example, good morning, Mrs. Officer Smith. How can I help you? Number three, always be courteous to the caller. Ask your questions politely. Number four, avoid keeping people waiting. Number five, try to avoid the hold button as much as possible. Number six, do not engage in idle talk or gossip or tie up the phone unnecessarily. This is not professional conduct. Number seven, always be discreet and never violate a confidence on the phone. Number eight, make sure you have pencil, paper, and are ready to take notes or messages as needed. Number nine, always give priority to emergency calls. And when asking for emergency aid, give complete information as well as directions. Number 10, never hang up on someone deliberately. Now, all emergency numbers should be kept close at hand or committed to your memory. Now, these numbers, for instance, could be your supervisor, the fire department, your local police and ambulance service, as well as emergency medical technicians. Keep these numbers handy or post them by every phone at your work site. Well, now let's talk about some problem situations you may have on the phone, especially some problem calls you may have to deal with. Now these can be a nuisance, so knowing how to handle them can be a big help to you and your company. Now with problem telephone calls such as obscene callers, first off remember to carefully note what is said and the characteristics of the caller. Second, report all such calls to your supervisor. And remember that from time to time you may have a very serious call such as a bomb threat. Now when bomb threat calls come in, make sure you keep the caller talking and contact your supervisor as soon as possible. Try to ask as many questions as you can. Now some of the important questions to ask are, why are you doing this? When will the bomb go off? Where is it located? What kind of bomb is it? When was it placed? Who are you? Well now let's go over some of the things that we talked about today. Remember that communication is essential for you as a security officer. It is the process by which people convey information. Remember that there are four objectives to communication. The first is to be understood. The second is to accept the message. The third is to obtain a favorable reaction or action. 
and the fourth to develop or maintain favorable relations. Also remember that there are barriers to overcome in any communication. The first are internal barriers. Now those are the barriers that are within ourselves. The second are external barriers and those are obstacles placed by others or by situations such as the environment. Also, be sure you remember the four C's of communication. Confidence, creativity, caring, and consideration. And never forget that listening is the key to effective communication. Now there's several ways to improve your listening skills like paying attention, overlooking distractions, and being interested in what you hear as well as using all your thought power. Now as a security officer you'll use many types of communication equipment. Now their proper use and maintenance is an important part of your job and is an important responsibility you have. And finally, remember that you may be handling some strange phone calls such as nuisance or obscene phone calls as well as even bomb threats. So remember that when you get these calls to keep these people talking. Keep the caller talking, contact your supervisor immediately and pay attention to what you hear. Well that's all we have for today. We'll see you next time on ProForce.